Hello everyone, welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie the Crimson Prince Nymph, which is it's not really a Prince Nymph, but it has the goose bites, and all flies using goose bites, I just tend to call them Prince Nymphs or variation of So what I have here is a jig hook. So the fly, once it's done, is going to ride upside down. This is my preferred model of hooks for all kinds of nymphs. I just feel like they ride better in the water and also you hook the bottom a lot less so I don't see any reason not to use them. And this hook here is from Hanak and is their Jig Superb. And This is one of my favorite hooks. It has this nice wide gape and also this that they call bent in point, so the point is going slightly in and this is going to have, or at least I think, a slightly higher chance to hook fish and to keep it there. It's like the... what's it called? If I can find it... the Tiemko 103, so it also has this bent in point and this is another hook that I really like. You could also tie this, I've tied and fished jig hooks with the straight point, it works really well too. And this one I'm going to be tying on a size 14, but you could tie this down 16, 18s, it just really depends on how tiny you want your fly, so you could also go bigger if you want to imitate some bigger mayfly nymphs or stonefly nymphs. The bead is a 2.3 mm copper tungsten bead, or the color is copper, the material is tungsten. And then, as if it needed more weight, I'm going to add some lead free wire. And this one is the 0.015. And this is going to help the fly sink even faster, but also to keep the bead in place. On a regular hook, the bead kind of just stays there, but on this one, it has to go on the right way or it will just move around and make for a quite ugly fly. So here I'm putting down about 9 turns of wraps of this lead free wire. And this bead here has this little slot and this is so it can go down right to the eye but the wire is a little bit too thick to go inside. So what I will do is I will take my flat nose pliers and I'm going to squeeze the end just a little bit and this is going to flatten this wire and we can then push it up before we do I'm going to put a little bit of super glue and this is going to make this really really secured as this is going to jump alongside the bottom of the river so you want quite durable flies for this, or you could also get a whole lot of non-durable flies. But I like to be able to fish my flies for a quite long period of time and also get a lot of fish on them before having to change them. And then a little bit of glue onto the wire as well and this is going to really secure everything and also when we're going to wrap with our thread. It's not going to sink down inside or in between the turns of wire as much, so it makes it a little bit easier to tie. Speaking about thread, for this one the underbody is going to be this bright red, and hence the name of the fly, the Crimson Prince Nymph. So this is then going to be covered with another material and going to dull it down just a little bit and here I'm starting right behind the wire and then we can break or cut the thread off and on my way down I'm going to tie in the tailing material and for this red variant of this fly I'm going to use some natural pheasant tail you could also use some dark brown or any color just to match your other materials so here I'm taking five of these fibers off and 
I'm going to put them 90 degrees from the stem and this is going to roughly align the tips then tear them off and here the length of the tail I want this to be slightly shorter than the length of the whole body so I'm going to tie these in right on top and I'm trying to keep these on the top as well and if you find that your tail is a little bit too long just pull slightly and this should bring in the fibers just a little bit and there I'm happy now to keep the bulk down on the fly I'm going to tie in the two next materials going up and the first one is the rib and this is some small copper wire and here also you can use any color that you want it's just that I'm going to tie this with this copper colored head so it makes for a nice fly with this copper wire but here really you can mix and match all the colors just to suit or to imitate whatever fly that you want this is quite general pattern so if you want to tie it in green or black or even blue maybe or purple it's completely your choice and then what I have here is uh, one strand of ostrich fur and this is in a natural grey color and I'm going to tie this in by the tip and this material is quite resistant so you can tie it in right up to the tip and it's usually not going to break and just because I say this in this video it's 100% sure that it's going to break but will hope not and then I'm tying these up right to the start of this wire and here I'm going to tie in the body material and what I'm using is some uh, body tubing or hollow tubing they call this one and this is in a midge size which is the extra small you would say this one is the color is called tan which is a light brown and I just cut it into a slight point so it's easier to tie in and these kind of bodies that I will tie on this fly I saw on Instagram a guy named Jared Church tied a few really amazing caddis pupas using about the same technique so I just borrowed it so here you should see his Instagram name and I also link his account in the description below so go check this out to see some amazing patterns and here I'm tying this down and then back up again and doing it this way with the wire we're going to have a quite smooth body even now but I'm going to make this even better going up to about the bead and then back down again and here the idea is to keep this really smooth but not too thick we don't want to build up too much bulk on this fly and I'm taking it up and down a few times and there I'm happy and then before doing anything else I'm going to change the thread to my absolute favorite and this one is the Nano Silk from Samplefly 80 knot in beige and I'm going to start this right behind the bead a few turns and then I'm going to spin it around the other one and this is going to this is a really easy way to just bind down another thread so from now on we're going to use this thread and the first material that's going to go up the body is this body tubing and here on the first turn, so I'm going to pull a little more than on the last ones. This is to build up a little bit of taper. And what I'm going to do is to not do touching turns with this one. I'm going to leave the slightest space between each turn. And this is going, or this is for the ostrich hurl to have something to sink into. If you would wrap this up without leaving this little space, the hurl would then stand onto 
the plastic and it could just fall off or but doing it this way it's going to sink down and be trapped like between like in a little canyon here in between the body tubing and then up right to the bead a few heavy turns to tie this off this is quite slippery material and the thread as well so you want to really tie this down before cutting it off and then I'm going to take up the hurl as well and here I'm doing one turn right at the back and then in these little grooves and this should go quite easy and then um, we can see that the hurls are sticking out about 90 degrees from the hook shank and then right up to the bead and the thread and tie it off a few turns make sure it's really secured and then we're going to cut off the excess and now we're going to wrap the rib as well and this is we're going to do exactly the same as for the ostrich shell and this is going to also go inside these little grooves and it's going to trap a few of the hurls or the ostrich fibers but this really doesn't matter it's going to secure this quite well and then up right to the bead a few turns to tie this off make sure this is really secured as well and then bend and break this off and here we have some of these hurls or the little fibers that are trapped but it makes for a really nice effect and then why I call this a prince nymph is just because the bites or the goose bites and for this one I'm going to use some brown and I'm going to take two off the stem or whatever you can call it and I'm going to cut the ends off this is just to make these a little bit easier to manage and then I'm going to try to align these and here you could tie these on the top of the fly right here and this is then going to be the bottom as it's going to fish this way or you could tie it on the bottom and this will be the top as it's going to ride upside down it really doesn't matter the insects, the natural insects in the water are going to move around and spin so if you tie it this way, this way, you could even tie it to the side, I think it would make no difference it's mostly a matter of personal preference if you want to like be completely true to the naturals or a little bit off but here I'm going to tie this in on the bottom and the only reason I do this is as this is going to enter the water it's going to drop most likely this way even though even that is not completely sure but with these hurls and these bias laying here like a little cover it's going to trap some air inside and I think this makes for a neat little effect so here I'm going to use the eye of the hook as a guide to separate these two and then holding these I'm going to tie them in the whole length of the body and here I think they are just slightly too long so I'm going to move these back a little bit and try to tie these in once again and then just make sure that you got these exactly where you want them before tying down and I'm going to pull this one just a little bit 
always make sure that your materials are exactly where you want them before tying down and finishing off your fly you can always go back and change something and then a few really heavy turns and then some in front to really bind this down and to make everything secure then we can come in with the scissors and cut off the end. Here we have these little two bites on the underside or wing buds or these could even represent legs and I think once the fly is finished I think they look like two ears but that's maybe just me that is a little bit weird but then a few turns to really bind this down and what I'm going to do is then turn the fly upside down or the right way again and it's just a little bit easier to tie it this way and for the thorax or the little collar on the fly you could go with almost any material that you want you could use a little bit, bit more of this ostrich hole make a nice little dark brown or dark grey color you could use some dubbing and the one dubbing that is really nice for this is the ice dub and the peacock color and if you want a little more durable fly this is what I would suggest and usually I use that too on my jig name but here I'm using a slightly more classic material but also a lot less durable I just like the look of it so a few turns to bind out on this pico curl and then I'm going to wrap this up creating a small color on the fly and then once you're happy with how thick it is we can then just tie it off and right behind the bead make sure you tie this down quite well then we can cut off the stem and the excess and then what I like or what I really like with this thread is that it's so thin it's going to sink down right behind the bead and to get covered or get lost in this peacock curl so you won't even see the thread and then the easiest way to get some super glue onto the thread is to put it on the thread and then we finish if you do it any other way you will have a nice mess of super glue right here at the head and just won't make for a nice fly and then a three turn whip finish and we can cut off the thread so there we have the crimson prince name thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already see you next time and happy time